Do you think works best? Neither. It's just with your hair color and features. Pinks will work something a bit bolder. Susie. Mimi. Mimi. What do you know about men's ties? Cinema Confidential is on the set of the second season of the hit TV series Project Blue Book in Vancouver, Canada. In the next few episodes, you'll be able to see some of the key players related to the production of the show. Mimi Hynek is the wife of Dr. Hynek, who is part of the team of Project Blue Book in the UFO investigations. She is a good mother and a wife, and at the same time she is very smart and resourceful about what's happening. She has close relations with Susie, from whom she actually has to stay away from. Her role is played by Canadian actress Laura Manel. Tell me what you like and what you dislike about Mimi. What I like and what I dislike. <laughs> no one's asked me that before. Um, what I like. Well, I love a lot of things about Mimi, especially since I've been hanging out with her for a little yeah. while. You guys are close. We're close, yeah. Um, I loved her journey in many ways, um, especially last year when I was finding out more about women in the 1950s and what it meant to be a woman in the 1950s and watching all these educational videos for American women um, and how they were supposed to be good wives. And for me, like the videos were very wholesome and very sweet at first and kind of cute and you kind of giggle at them, but when you'd look a little bit deeper, it would always be about like compromising your needs fully and completely for your husband. It wasn't a give and take, and I found that a little bit, you know, soul destroying a little <laughs> bit. So I think that was something that Mimi was struggling with at the beginning. So I love where we started off and seeing her progress. She really didn't know anything. Project Blue Book came into her life, she was in the dark. Um, and often she was a bit of a damsel in distress because of it. And maybe that would be something you'd be like, oh, Mimi, if only we could just get you through this, right? <laughs> so maybe that would be the realm of like, lightly going like, oh, come on, memes, let's, let's get out of this. But at least those challenges made her stronger and build up. Um, but overall, I love Mimi. I think she's great. Donna never struck me as the type. To run off with another man? To leave her husband. No warning, no note. I, mean, I just saw her stocking up her bomb shelter the other day. It doesn't make sense. I don't know, Mimi. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. What secrets people are hiding. Plus, she dresses super cool. She does. She does. Not as well as maybe my little buddy, Ksenia, um, Susie, who's a little more glamorous than me. But that's okay. I can handle it. <laughs> well, that's cool. Do you think that uh, she has stronger chemistry with her husband or with her friend? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question too. I probably should get prepared for that. Um, I think last year was a tough one. I think this year there's definitely some good chemistry between um, Mimi and Alan and things have a, a, a stronger solid base. But there's something about Susie in terms of what she really meant to Mimi. And she was this catalyst for a lot of much needed change in her life. And I think Mimi was really needing something. She needed to be seen. She needed to um, find her inner potential. Um, she was feeling like there were a lot of voids in her life at that time. And you know, when someone comes in and they really see you and they really rise you yeah. up and um, all of those things really get to you in here. So I think it's inevitable that she would have that connection with her that would be that strong. I mean, it got a little confusing at times, we'll admit, but, um, <laughs> but um, 
There was some chemistry, I'll admit it. There was a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> How would you position Mimi in your own filmography um, as a character that, you've, all the characters that you've played? Uh, I mean, obviously I'm still sitting with her right now, but when I first read Mimi, I loved Mimi. And I knew right away, like I felt this kind of kinship to her and I really wanted to play her. Something just felt really right, even though I didn't have the role yet. I had to audition a whole bunch of times. I had to talk to the producers. I had to, you know, all the screen testing and all that rigmarole to get the role. I didn't know I would get it, but I just knew I loved her. So when she finally came through and she was mine, that was a pretty big deal for me. You need to learn how to enjoy what you can do. What makes you special? In fact, you want to kiss me? Right? Now. Laura Manel is an actress with a diverse portfolio on the screen and on the stage. She has been part of big titles such as TV series Alphas, Haven, Van Helsing and The Man in the High Castle. She has also been Janie Slater, the loved one of Dr. Manhattan in the hit title Watchmen. She is a winner of prestigious theatre awards. Why did you choose acting? It's been a really long time um, since I first decided that I wanted to be an actor. It's like, it's weird, but I always knew, even like as a young kid, and I wasn't a loud kid by any means. I wasn't a kid who loved getting a lot of attention, but I always felt comfortable in the arts. And for some reason acting, it was like, I guess a, little bit of a dare for me when I was a little kid, right? And you'd get out of yourself and you'd try new things. And I think it's a really great way, you know, ease, even as you're easing into your teens and your adulthood to, to sort of also find yourself yeah. as you play different characters and it really forces you to get out of yourself and try new things. And uh, I guess it really gives you a gift of self-discovery, which is great. Thank you. As I ran out of time, I just want to to say that I'm super impressed about your work as an animal activist. This will not be a question, oh. a general thing, because I do that a lot as well. I love animals, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> they are the best. I like them better than people. Thank you. Although you're pretty nice. <laughs> so cute. Jürgen, one of my best. If you say so. Run back home, little princess. Dad. Colin Fior is the other big name taking part in the new season of Project Blue Book. An actor with a spectacular filmography of over 150 titles, an impressive talent and memorable looks, we have seen him in Thor, The Chronicles of Riddick, Face Off, Chicago, as well as hit TV series such as 24, The Umbrella Academy and many more. This is a live signal. Is this really happening? The Russians put the first man on the moon. Well, I come home from the garage and I see him climbing through the window. Uh-huh. With my wife, Roxy, laying there, sleeping like an angel. Is that true, Mrs. Hart? I'm telling you, it's the guy. Six children. Gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I give you. The Umbrella Academy. Is that one of the reasons why you became an actor? To be able to play all these so different people? Well, and indeed, the villains are the most interesting. Um, villains are more fun because they usually have a plan. They're going to kill all the boring people and rule the world. And that tends to be more exciting than, oh, well, just sort of be blonde and prince-like, you know, those people need to be stopped. So I find that stuff more interesting. And look at my face, what were my options? You know, for years and years and years, I didn't know what to do with this face. Finally, it makes sense, and it turns out I'm scary. So I'm gonna go with that for as long as it lasts. That's so cool, though. Good evening, I'm General James Harding from the United States Air Force. And we're here tonight live from Roswell, New Mexico. 
I want to talk to you about a rumor that's been circulating again about a mysterious crash that's happened here in the desert. I'm here to tell you, the American people, that it's just a hoax. You are new to the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me who you are on the show and, well, I'm guessing you wear a uniform. Well, because gentlemen look better in uniforms. Yes, uh, they do. The character's <laughs> not military or anything. I just thought this would be cute. Um, yes, I, agree. I play Admiral Gale, who is the commander of the, well, of the USS Wisconsin, but in this particular context, also of the NATO fleet in an exercise that is taking place in the North North Atlantic. So, how fun is it to be that character? Why did you say yes? Um, well, generally, I say yes most of the time because I have children in school who keep asking me for money to pay for it. Um, so I'm slightly <laughs> promiscuous that way. But I said yes because it was a terrific part. And it's also got some remarkable guys in it. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Aidan Gillens and Michael Malarkey's, and, and they're delightful people to work with. So that's always fun. And, and you know, if you, if you choose projects based on how delightful the people are, you really can't ever go wrong. Um, you always have a good time, no matter whether you're working 14, 18 hour days. And we, we do tend to work long hours in this kind of stuff, because there's a lot to accomplish doing these massive shows um, in a timely and sort of cost effective way. Gale is a, um, he's a commander, and he's a commander of the fleet. He's a commander of the fleet, the entire NATO fleet. So we're talking about 200 ships, uh, 80,000 men, and in very difficult conditions. Uh, I don't know if you know the North Atlantic, but it's, it's never nice. You don't ever want a holiday there. Maybe if you're going to Mormansk or the fishing, maybe, but no, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't by choice. And of course, we have to pretend that it's cold and wet. And because we're, we're really not that good at acting, they, they put fans and spray us with water, which is really unpleasant. So it, it, it's fairly difficult, but interesting work. And he's a, you know, he's a very interesting and powerful guy. And we're talking about a very dangerous point in human history. The Cold War is a particularly fraught environment where we were all on edge, all willing to believe the worst of each other. And that makes us have very itchy trigger fingers and default to very dangerous places in terms of our behaviors and actions. So when we see un inexplicable conditions, something like a UFO, uh, a soldier, is likely to default to action. And taking action as a soldier usually means destroying things. Whereas, obviously, uh, Quinn and Dr. Hynek are saying, no, 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 there might be another explanation. I go, really? I don't think so. Let's blow some stuff up. So people were actually easily misled at those times. Well, there's so much gray area, yeah. right? You say unidentified, I say aliens. You say unidentified, I say Russian. Russians. Why not? It, it has to be. And depending on how limited your point of view is, that's kind of where you come from. So what I love about my guy is he has a very narrow point of view. Uh, he's very skeptical of the, the other possible explanations. And so I find that interesting to be so kind of rigid in in the climate that we face today politically globally i think this is a very important show for a time like this because it says well no hang on just a second take a deep breath take a step back let's think about this and how do we understand people we don't understand yeah. um, i love it when a when a period piece is so um, contemporary. <laughs> well, we're still very true to the period. I mean, we're ripping this right from the pages of history. We haven't invented too much of anything. What we're doing is saying, look, as it turns out, this is a remarkably current show because people don't change. We wish they would, but they don't. So we have to constantly bring creatively and in an entertaining way, people's focus back to, you know what? We're right back here right now. We're facing these divisions, this misunderstanding. I recommend to you very heartily Malcolm Gladwell's latest book, Talking to Strangers, which is all about this stuff. Yeah. And so Project Blue Book is just saying, have another look, look again. We've been here before, let's not repeat the bad stuff. This interview is over. 
Do you know what? It was kind. Of, it would have been easier just for somebody to shout out final question <laughs> because this international pantomime is is it's wonderful, but 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 faintly distracting. You have to understand because if it's somebody like me, when I see somebody do that and the cameraman particularly do that, I go, oh my head is shiny. That's the only conclusion an actor can come to. I'm trying to cheat and look at all your notes. <laughs> my name is Laura Manel. I play Mimi Heineck on Project Blue Book and please watch our second season on epic drama. I'm Colm Fior, and I'm playing Admiral Gale in season two of Project Blue Book. Watch us on epic drama.